Shalom, 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 all viewers and listeners. I want to acknowledge my general overseer, Apostle Peter Makombe. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we come to you, my Lord. We find rest in your arms. We find rest in your arms. Thank you, Lord, for the hollow of your hand. Thank you, Father. We say, Jehovah Ebenezer, that's the Lord you have helped us so far. Lord, Holy Spirit, have your way. I step aside and you give us the mind of God. All glory, all praise, all honor be unto God, our Holy Father in heaven. Through Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Once again, I'm very excited this evening by the grace and ability of God to bring to you our first ever session of the burden laid by God on my heart of Bible study, Bible teaching, and Bible in-depth analysis over this session. We want to thank God for granting us this day, for favoring us and blessing us so much. Maybe, first of all, you might want to know what's the meaning of this word. Probably you saw the circulating poster where it was written, Anakazo Broadcast. The word Anakazo is a Greek word. Anakazo is A N. A G K A Z O. Why I preferred the Greek version was that that word it covers and camouflages and summarizes every aspect which I wanted, every aspect which was being laid by the Spirit of God on my heart. And this aspect of Anakazo. It means to coerce. It also means to round up. It means to compel. It means to necessitate. It means to bid. Before I go on our first topical session, I would want you to know the root source of this word. Anakazo, we find this word coming from Luke 14, verse 23. Luke 14, verse 23. We might go there. When you see on Luke 14, verse 23, Jesus writes the parable of the great supper. And you know that a parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. So, in short, this great supper Jesus Christ was talking about, the hidden facts which were there, the mystery of this parable, the secrets of this parable, was the symbolization of the wedding of the Lamb. When Jesus Christ raptures, catches up his church, takes his church, which is his bride, the pure ones, the holy ones, the righteous ones, those who are blameless and are darens and practitioners of his holy word. When he raptures them, we are told by the scriptures that there will be a conduct of the wedding of the Lamb. So Jesus gives an account now of this wedding of the Lamb as a parable in Luke 14. And if you read through up to verse 23, you find it says, and the Lord, this Lord now is the boss of the supper, is the boss of the banquet which was being held. If you go to the account of Matthew, Matthew 22, the same parable 
published by Jesus. If you go to the account of Matthew chapter 22, you will, you will really see the symbolism I'm talking about. On verse 2 of Matthew 22, it, it writes, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. I want you to see the adumbration here, the prefiguration, the foreshadowing, the pregnancy of the end of time, great wedding of the Lamb. Jesus is saying, the kingdom of heaven is like, it's a mystery, it's a parable, it's a hidden terminology. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king who made a marriage for his, for his son. <laughs> so, who is this king of kings? Is God himself. Who is the son? It's Jesus Christ. Marrying who? The church. <laughs> quite thrilling. Quite exciting. Quite joyous. Jesus is plainly speaking to them. Those who have any ear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying. So if you read this account of Matthew 22, around uh, verse uh, 9, you will discover Jesus says, Go ye therefore unto the highways, and as many as you shall find, bid to the marriage. Bid to the marriage. Compel to the marriage. Drive to the marriage. Round them up, collect them, gather them, assemble them, congregate them, come with them, invite them, compel them, and accuse them to the wedding. So, my mandate here, my task, my exercise during this broadcast, even with the guests and facilitators whom God, I pray, will grant us and uh, expose us to. Our mandate is to make sure every viewer, wherever you are in the whole world, every listener, wherever you are in the whole world, at the end of that topical session, you and I and so many are compelled to come to Jesus Christ. That's the primary motive of this teaching session. To make us come to Jesus. To make us come to Jesus. That's why we said an Akazo broadcast. We are compelling this drawing of men unto Jesus. We are scattering it wild, widely in all directions. Because broadcast from the dictionary meaning means scattering widely in all directions. And this is also evidenced and supported by Jesus Christ himself. His last words when he was about to ascend. He says in Matthew 28 verse 19 to 20. Go ye therefore unto all nations making disciples of Jesus Christ. That's the NIV. The King James Version says teaching all nations. So, this Anakazo broadcast is merely a teaching platform where we are teaching the word of God. We are not here for emotional arguments. We are not here to be argumentative. We are not here to uh, drive home our emotional points or our denominational uh, um, views and stuff. No. We are here to point everyone, including myself, to the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. Whatever topic the Holy Spirit is going to inspire us, we pray that it brings a pointing unto Jesus Christ. So this is the basis of this teaching session. Maybe some of you wanted to know what is an akazo and what is the motive behind this broadcast. Broadcast simply means we are going to go through the radios, through the televisions, through the internet, through the websites, through YouTube, Twitter, emails, whatever form 
which makes the gospel of Jesus go. That's our bedding. So today I'm going to introduce on our first uh, Bible session topic, which I have uh, coined the mystery of the church. The mystery of the church. This is going to be ongoing and next Tuesday, by the grace of God, again you will be here. So continue to take your notes, continue to be ready. The mystery of the church. So I shall take our readings. Matthew 16, verse 18. Matthew 16, verse 18. Jesus now is responding after Peter's confession of Christ at Caesarea Philippi. Verse 18. And I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Upon this rock I will build my church. I want you to check the expressions of Jesus. He is saying, upon this rock, I will build my church. My church. We are saying the mystery of the church. So, number one mystery which is so clear is this church we are going to learn about. He has got an owner. He has got an originator. He has got one who began, who commenced, who is the Alpha Omega, Jesus. So, once you see us on air, we are not dealing with our church, but his church, which he says, my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This should excite us, especially during this COVID period. That COVID won't prevail against the gates of the church of Jesus. So, Bible studying of this mystery of the church, it's very exciting. <laughs> because already mm -hmm. Jesus is giving us advantages and disadvantages. He is saying if it is his church, if it is the church of Jesus, it has got overcoming power, conquering power, winning power, championship power over every principality, wicked force, evil, demonic, diabolic, and the marine spirit is above. But if it is the church of us as people, we are doomed. We have defeat before us. Luke 1, 17b. Luke 1, 17b. We want to go very slow. We want to get this. Because this word saying church, church, Hey, people have got different interpretations, opinions, views, and uh, understanding. Luke 1 17. Right. Luke 1 17. But I just want the last part, but I'll read the whole verse. And he shall go. This is uh, uh, John the Baptist. He shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. And the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. What was the agenda, the motive, the sending out mission of John the Baptist? It's clear. He was a forerunner of Jesus, coming before Jesus to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So John the Baptist was there to make ready a people who were prepared for the honor of the church so that he can build his church. Are you seeing the chronology here? He was building for the honor of the church. So it's like a, we have a house. We want to build a house. There are people who come in as laborers. They come in, they dig the foundation, they do the excavation, but they are not the owners. They are just preparing the ground 
so that the builders may build. So that the builders may build. That is what was the function of John the Baptist. Preparing a people who were ready now to be prepared to be married by Jesus. Now we go on to Matthew 28 verse 19 to 20. Verse 19 to 20. Probably because of our time. Probably after this reading we will stop. Then we will continue next week by the grace of God. Matthew 28, verse 19 to 20. We want to see the instruction given by Jesus when he was about to go. We found him with the disciples stating to the church what he had come to do to build his church. And he says, my church. And now he's going. What does he say? Matthew 28, verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Are you seeing now? Are you seeing the teaching now? I've said the agenda of this broadcast is to teach all nations. Is to make this a platform of teaching nations. And this is the primary mandate given by Jesus. That we go therefore and teach all nations. So if we are assembled and we are not teaching. Then. There's something else. Baptizing them. In the name of the Father. Of the Son. And of the Holy Ghost. So in summary. As I wind up. I want to. Uh, drop this. First session. Or this introductory remarks. Say. The church is built. By Jesus Christ. Alone. That's what we've learned. The church is built by Jesus Christ alone. So he does the evangelism. Fine. In summer, in courts, he does the evangelism. Then number two, the church is prepared and made ready through his word teachings. As we have discovered. Teach all nations. Then the same people who are taught now are sent out as we are seeing Jesus Christ say, go ye therefore. When these people are taught like the disciples were taught by Jesus, they were sent out. That's where we find the term apostle. People who are sent out. Apostle simply means send out. You are sent out. So we are all apostles. That's where you discover uh, the early church is called the apostolic church. Some churches, they term themselves apostolic. They are not meaning this white garment sex. They are saying people who are out to go and make further and more disciples. This is now the missionary work and the missionary field. God bless you for listening. God bless you for writing notes. God bless you for typing out notes. God bless you for your viewership. God bless you for your listenership. By the grace of God, we will continue according to his will next week when we are going to explain by the grace of Jesus, going to explain by the leading of the Holy Spirit what is the church? This church which is called my church. What is this church? That's what I've said, the mystery of the church. Father, we thank you. We continue to worship your name. Continue to be with us. Till we meet again next week, let your grace vehicle us into your destiny. Father God, we decrease and you increase in us. Let you, Jesus Christ, be seen. The Lamb of God will take it away the sin of the world. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Shalom. See you next week.